Hello, my friends, Evolutionary Energy Arts family. Well, guys, let's look at the in Indonesian tsunami and s look a little in-depth into what we have going on. So, as we know, one of the major things that came up was why did they cancel the warning? And so they're saying that sensors missed the huge waves. And, you know, this caused the loss of so many lives it's it's such a tragedy it's such a sad thing and one of the things that hits me is do you realize how dangerous it is to live in the indonesia in general okay so this was a 7.5 shallow and many people have said you know there's no way it was 7.5 they think it was more like 8.0 8.1 regardless you know we know they're always downgrading we, we know that we can't count on uh, any sort of government or governance to really truly help us you know and to, to give us honest numbers honest explanations let's look at the history of this area I mean right now we have at least 384 people dead tremendous disaster um, there was actually hundreds of people gathered for a festival on the beach when waves as high as 18 feet smashed on shore at dusk sweeping many to their death and you know, people are questioning whether the, the warning was lifted too soon. Undoubtedly, it was. It's pretty obvious. Um, but even so, there, there has to be a better way. There has to be, you know, people have to look at, is it going to be feasible to live in some of these areas? Look at what's happening and look at what's going to happen. It's going to get worse. You know, that's pretty much simply what's going to, what's going to happen. Indonesia is on the Pacific Ring of Fire, and it's probably the most hard-hit place, period, on Earth. Now, the most devastating came on Boxing Day in 2004, when a magnitude 9.5, two whole magnitudes higher, that they admit, triggered a massive tsunami that killed about 226,000 people along the shorelines of the Indian Ocean, including over 126,000 in Indonesia that you know dwarfs this by a mile and so they've also had them you know tsunamis in 1927 and 1968 right so is this an area people should even be living in or if they are there then obviously not right up on the coast you know it, we have to look at these things there are going to be mass migrations of people it's just what's going to happen and so we should get a head start on things and you know don't let people rebuild right on the water <laughs> it's just um, honestly it's, it's just a, a matter of time so we really have to think about this now there's some speculation there was a landslide under the sea that displaced a lot of water and caused a tsunami and that's a scenario that we talked about with um, over on the East Coast and the Canary Islands as well, which is scary. So you got to look at it. You know, should people even be living in some of these areas? You know, we have these monsoon floods that come every year and destroy, um, you know, uh, houses, huts, villages in, say, Bangladesh, some areas in India. Yes, the world is so populated in some of these countries with just tons of people living in a very small area. But if we truly had a global governance that was really, really concerned with people and not concerned with just corporations and profits, then maybe we could do something about it and really actually do some sort of planning. Only the richest countries really do any sort of planning, and that doesn't even really include the U.S., the U.S. is doing nothing, you know, as well, as far as preparing for the changes that we see afoot. It's, it's obvious, you know, look at the damage in the Carolinas and, and look at the damage from Harvey. And, uh, you know, we've just seen so much damage going on back. And just a lack of foresight, a lack of planning. These times are going to be some of the most perilous that we've seen in thousands and thousands of years. So we need to, to make changes now. We need to have people waking up now. You know, at least 384 people killed. And there's, it's going to be much worse than this in many other areas. And as you see the damage to these buildings, you could go through and, and see some of the videos. You know, the damage to the roads, it's just crazy. 
a lot of these areas are not going to be, you, it's going to be very risky to have them populated. And with the changes that are coming, it makes sense to try to get people out of the worst of these areas now. Right? Severe flooding kills 200 people in Nigeria. And this place is almost 200,000. And we've seen this so many times. You know, how many nomads are there on the planet now? Are we going to become a, a culture, an age where there's mostly nomads wandering around, escaping one natural disaster after another? And we've seen this. And the floods in Nigeria have affected over 820,000 people. That's, that's a huge amount of people. It just keeps going on. And we're just getting into this. The world needs to wake up and we need to make some changes. Tropical Storm Kirk causes power outages, heavy flooding in the Caribbean. Uh, authorities in Barbados said they helped rescue several people from a flooded home. Schools were canceled in St. Lucia, Dominica, Guadalupe, and Martinique. Up to 10 inches of rain fell in some parts of Martinique, Dominica, and Barbados. They had flash floods and mudslides. Also warned of heavy rains for St. Croix in eastern Puerto Rico. It was not a real big windmaker, but yes, it definitely piled on the water. And that's what we're seeing, how water kills. You know, water is the thing that brings life, but it's, it can also kill. And we have heavy rains bringing street flooding to Galveston. And in fact, in you know, Texas has been hammered. And actually, in fact, the governor has issued state of disaster due to flooding with more rain in the forecast. Um, they've been really hammered this year, and, and it's been unusual, and a lot of my... Uh, a lot of my friends and Evolutionary Energy Arts family down there in Texas have been telling me this This is really uh, uh, bizarre. It's just bizarre. The weather is so not normal. But you know what? We're in a transition. And, and, and I was going to say, you know, we're going to have a new normal. Well, we will maybe at some point. But, but the, the normal is going to be variability. Tremendous variability. Tremendous swings from one thing to another. And we have Rosa, some moisture that's going to fuel flash floods and mudslide risks in southwestern USA. And Arizona actually, you know, could get up to two to six inches of rain. In some areas of the desert, you know, that's going to be like a year's worth of rain. Um, pretty wild. It's up to eight inches even possible in some areas. So watch for more flash flooding um, in, in life-threatening situations. Mudslides, you know, washouts, all that. Very, very, very um, serious, potentially serious situation. And here you see this is from NOAA. And Rosa re intensifies as it moves northward. Heavy rainfall expected over Baja, California, and the southwestern U.S. And we have Tropical Storm Leslie just sitting out there in the middle of the Atlantic. And eventually it looks like she's going to go ahead and turn up and head towards Iceland. As, as Zeke is barking at something out there. Sorry, guys. And this is from Tropical Tidbits. Uh, we have basically Kong Ray, uh, which will eventually be a threat to either Taiwan, Korea, China, or Japan, as it looks to head over in that direction later on. And these are some of the GFS ensembles. So all those areas need to watch Kong Ray. So the, it's been very, very active when you know the Pacific side especially has been super active. As we see more invests are still there with the possibility for formation into tropical storms and hurricanes and or typhoons. And then over here we have out of Electroverse, we are looking at Alberta, Canada to increase its snow timber record totals with further 20 plus centimeters of snow falling. Arctic air coming on down, you know, just a taste of what's to come as the grand solar minimum uh, goes into full effect and we get deeper into this. And, you know, some don't believe in the grand solar minimum. I think we are going into a cooling cycle. That is obvious. Uh, what the cause is, that's the, the real interesting part. That's the real interesting part, you know. And here we're looking at Arctic ice, and as we see right now, we're running pretty much even with these two lines, which is 2015 and 2017, as far as the amount of Arctic ice uh, depth and volume. 
So interesting to watch this and see how that develops as well. So we have riot police clashing with pro-independence protesters in Barcelona. Uh, no, that whole Catalonian thing is really not completely over yet. Uh, you still have run-ins going on. You still have both sides clashing. And, um, you know, it's not over. And it just feels like there's just upwelling and bubbling up of this, an this feeling of anarchy that's building in the world. And um, it's, it's just interesting to feel it. You know, we are going through an energetic change. The energies that are coming in are stronger than we've ever experienced before. And so with these energies intensifying, these energies are bringing to the forefront emotions. And so people are very, very emotional. Have you noticed that? Have you noticed how emotional you have been lately? Have you noticed how how wild these energetic and emotional swings can be. There's more, there's more going on beneath the surface than we even know. There are a lot of energetic manipulations going on from many of the powers that be, but then there's also these energetic uh, energies coming in through cosmic rays because we're all getting bombarded and exposed to more cosmic rays than we've ever been exposed to in our lifetimes. And so they are actually changing our DNA. They are actually mutating our DNA and changing our DNA, waking us up in many ways. And they are actually causing what we call in medical Qigong um, energy that's buried in Lao channels. And Lao channels are energetic spots uh, where we put energy in the body is literally stored in the physical location in the body and it's emotional energy that we can't deal with at the time so we just kind of bury it and it does actually uh, take place in resonance in a, in a specific area and so what we're doing now is all these energies are coming in they're causing us to purge and it's causing wild emotional swings it's causing a lot of different physical sensations, uh, the need to detox, the need to get out into nature, to root yourself, get your feet in the dirt. We are bombarded with so much besides these cosmic rays. We're getting hit with, um, obviously, chemtrails like crazy. We have 5G. Uh, we have so much EMF all over, all around us, bombarding us. It, when you get really out into nature and you get away from the big cities, you will notice the difference. And you will be able to tell how much the EMF really is affecting you. And it does. It affects us big time. And so we're seeing all these emotions rise up. All these different emotions uh, rising to the surface. So we have Serbia putting its military on high alert over an incident involving Kosovo Special Forces. And this is all about basically uh, water and basically control of a area where some drinking water is that that basically feeds these different countries and we're going to see a lot of fights over resources and for those of you that don't know where serbia is this is serbia and kosovo and a lot of these countries came into being um you know in the last 50 years or so and um there are still all these ancient feuds that are going on and all that's coming up to the surface. Everything is coming up and welling to the surface as we go through this great cleansing, this great purification. And so, you know, with the Hopi, uh, the blue Kachina is, is the first harbinger. And then the red Kachina is the purifier. And so we must work on detoxing ourselves in every way possible every day because we are getting bombarded in it. And um, years ago, I read a quote unquote channeled book that has turned out to be extremely accurate and uh, right on. And one of the things, and this is going back to I think 88 or 89, it said in the times that are coming, one of the most important things you could do is unplug. You're gonna have to unplug because we're getting bombarded with so much negativity like this, the risk of Ebola is spread from Congo now very high, the WHO is saying. And they're worried about spreading out into other, other countries as well, as it's basically almost crossed the Ugandan border. And it's in a very populated area. 
So this, this particular outbreak, they're more worried about than many others. And I could feel you guys getting overwhelmed with the doom and gloom. And we have to know what's going on in the world. We do. Um, but it's becoming almost too much for so many. And yet you want to be aware of when a tsunami's coming and may hit you. It may inundate you. Think about if you were sitting there in Wilmington, North Carolina, and you didn't pay any attention. You were totally unplugged completely unplugged, not listening to anybody, and you had no idea that Florence was coming. You know, what would, what would happen? And many people, you know, many people bugged in, and uh, we've seen, you know, flooding in so many different areas around the world. It's around the world, and these changes are affecting everywhere, all around the world. So we must must prepare ourselves in every way, but probably the most important thing is basically we, we have to keep ourselves in the right state of mind in order to deal with this. And we need to demand real changes from our leaders. We really, really do, because they're not giving us anything. Mexico says U.S. and Canada could reach a new NAFTA deal in 48 hours. You know, we're still, you know, we're talking about trade and all these things. And, of course, you know, they're important. And there's so much focus on all the uh, political things going on right now as well. And believe me, a lot of this is distraction. Uh, many of you believe that it really doesn't matter if it's a Democrat or a Republican that's leading the show you believe that basically they're both under control of higher forces and uh it's pretty wild it's it's really really pretty wild um wow you know it, it's it's amazing if uh if you guys get a chance check out richie from boston's latest and uh i'll leave it at that because i, I am going to dig up some stuff on what he's talking about there as well we, there are higher forces at work here. Yeah, there are higher forces at work that are very, very negative. And it's all about breeding that dissension. And those negative forces, do you think they really, really are looking out for our best interests? It's obviously not. If they were, we wouldn't be putting this type of money into the military and many other things. Uh, there was an article where it talked about that the average family is paying more uh, in taxes than they are for food and you know other just basic uh, needs it, it's crazy everything is so messed up and we need real change we're not going to get real change from any democrats or republicans we're not going to get real change out of this system that we are in and that's part of the point point. and so you know yesterday's video where i was touching on what i wanted to point out was just the fact that there's a lot of um, distraction going on and it's obvious distraction and not to negate anybody's personal experiences because everything is coming to a head and really welling up in each of us in an individual way as we're facing these energies and being forced to purge uh, in order to survive. We need to be doing daily detoxing spiritually, mentally and physically every single day in these times. And you know what? I think it is a good idea to, if you could, you know, get yourself an old-fashioned alarm clock if you have to wake up at a particular time in the morning and get up and go to work. Keep your phone way away from your head. You know, keep it out of your bedroom. Um, lock it up in a case. Stick it in the car. Um, unplug your modems and your routers at night before going to sleep. Realize, you know, that we're affected by all this energy coming off of all this it really what it is is surveillance equipment and and more than that it's more than surveillance equipment it's affecting us in every way it's affecting us electromagnetically it's affecting our thoughts it's affecting our biorhythms and so be aware of that and really you know when you are getting your rest and your peace unplug and get away from it all and at some point in time, the grid's going to go down. And, and honestly, that in many ways will be one of the biggest blessings we're ever going to have. Because, you know, this whole society is becoming one that is so toxic. And we really need to change that. And, and we're running out of time to change it. We need some real changes. So this is Top 10 Foods to Grow for Survival. And this is off the website Ask a Prepper. 
um, because no, we, we don't want to be afraid, but you don't want to be unprepared, you know? Uh, again, if people know, you, you know, it, it, you want to know if a tsunami's heading your way. You want to know if there's a supercell that's just on the other side of that, that hill, that mountain, that crest, and it's going to drop 10 inches of rain in an hour on your area. You want to know these things. You want to know if, you know, there's going to be an earthquake striking. If, if you know, there was just an earthquake that increases the chances of an earthquake in your area. There's all these things. You want to be aware and alert of these things. So we don't want to go bury our head in the sand. But yet we do need to take time to really unplug and to really ground ourselves and to get away from it all. Because these times can be very, very overwhelming. So that's where so many great practices like yoga, tai chi, qigong, meditation can come in and help tremendously. Now, going back to this, the top 10 foods to grow for survival. So when a collapse happens and you're in survival mode, you need to consider your long-term food needs. And so the native cultures, right, the three sisters, you guys know about um, the three sisters of the native, cult, yeah, native American cultures too, is what we're really talking about. And that was corn, squash, and beans. And so these are things that grew in North America relatively easily in most areas. And that's what mo much of their subsistence was on, corn, squash, and beans. And in South America, they also rely on corn and beans as well as potatoes. And in China, people have been growing enough food on a couple acres of land that they could feed their families and still have enough with to, to barter for other goods. So... You know, at some point, we're going to be back to bartering. We're going to be back to, to taking care of ourselves in many ways. So, you know, think about what you can grow in your area. Think about what gives you the most bang for the buck nutritionally, as far as space goes as well, and what can grow in your area. So, you know, beans, beans are going to be a staple. I mean, I personally love them. And, you know, great source of protein, great source of fiber. Um, and they store real well. Corn, there's many different varieties, and obviously there's so many things we could do with corn. Winter squash stores well for a long time, up to six months. Um, so this could actually get you through the winter uh, very, very well. And some of these grow so prolifically in, in many areas. Again, you have to get used to what grows in your area as well. Potatoes, of course, you know, think, think about the Great Irish Potato Famine. Uh, it's actually native to South America. It wasn't known anywhere else in the world until after Columbus sell, sailed. And potatoes are easy to grow in a range of climates and soil types. And so a key staple food. Carrots. You need your vitamin A, right? And carrots also are relatively easy to grow as well and store pretty well. Cabbage. Cabbage as well. Cold weather. You could grow that in the cold weather for sure. Uh, kale. Sweet potatoes, very nutritious. I love sweet potatoes. Again, they store really well, so think in terms of things that are going to store. Garlic, great blood purifier, antiviral, antibiotic, uh, boosts the immune system, tastes great. Uh, many, many herbs such as you know rosemary, thyme, basil, bay leaves, parsley, parsley oregano. So much uh, there can be dried and stored. Uh, so just some ideas for you guys as well. And then for you guys that are homesteading and thinking of taking it to another level, and, and many people think about chickens, and um, these are guinea fowls. And so these are something you may want to consider if you're going to do some chickens and get some eggs, or if you're a meat eater, actually going to eat them for their meat. Uh, these guys are pretty interesting because these guys, you don't really even have to feed them anything. They're super foragers. Uh, they are actually good watchdogs. They're very, very loud, and they, they get to know their family, and they'll be quiet around the people that are their family. But if somebody else that was a stranger showed up, they'll be actually very, very loud and give you warning. They are also really, they're good at um, getting rid of the need for insecticide because they will eat all the insects around, especially ticks, and ticks carry so many different diseases as well. And so these are kind of, uh, they're kind of loud and funky looking and bizarre acting. Uh, they will give you uh, good tasting eggs. And if you're eating meat, their, their meat is supposed to be pretty good as well. They will warn you if snakes are, are around. They hate snakes. 
Um, and as I said, they could be used as a guard dog as well. And uh, they will definitely clean your property of ticks. They're really known for uh, doing that, as well as other insects that could end up you know, being harmful to whatever you are growing in your garden as well. So it's, it's something to uh, consider if you are going to do the homestead thing and thinking about chickens. Maybe you get some of these uh, so ugly that they're cute birds as well to add to your flock. So my friends, as always, please do thumbs up to support the channel, subscribe and click the bell to get all the notifications and share with as many people as possible so we can wake up people to what's going on and demand some real change in this world before it's too late, honestly. And we need to band together and do as much of what we can do together uh, because we know we can't count on the governments of this world and the way that things are run right now. May you guys be blessed with abundant peace, love, health, and well-being, and always be kept safe in these times. God bless and namaste.